Tennessee Democratic Congressman Steve Cohen joining us now from Memphis. And sir, thank you for being with us and for giving us your perspective as a member of the House Judiciary Committee, which of course is investigating alleged Russian meddling in the election, or I should say not alleged, Russian meddling in the election and potential collusion by Trump campaign members. What is your reaction to this? Well, firstly, they, they waived their right to executive privilege when they cooperated with the investigation. And when they cooperated with the investigation, the investigation goes on. To, at the end of the investigation, they make a report to the Attorney General who's supposed to then give it to Congress. And you don't just kind of reclaim your privilege after they've done their report to redact or eliminate portions of it that you don't like and claim executive privilege then. They've given up that right, number one. Number two, any person who was under investigation would want to see the results of a study, normally in a criminal case, an FBI study, before it went to the indicting authority. And in this case, the indicting authority would be the Congress to look into impeachment since the president, according to the Justice Department policies, cannot be indicted. And the, the, the White House in this situation is the subject of the investigation, the possible uh, target of impeachment if there are shown to be violations, crimes, high crimes and misdemeanors, and the idea that they should be able to go back after they waived privilege and redact, edit the report before Congress sees it and the public sees it is just totally wrong. It's an, a, like what so much that, that they've done is an it's obstruction of justice, and that's what they want to do, and they're doing it right in front of the eyes of the American people. Do you have confidence in this Justice Department that they would not allow the White House to successfully challenge information that should be given to Congress? I, I don't have faith based on who appointed the Attorney General. Trump learned when he appointed Sessions that he made a mistake, which he said many times, because Sessions had to recuse himself, and Sessions did the ethical thing that an Attorney General is supposed to do, and that's recuse himself when he had prior uh, involvement in the alleged or the potential crime, and he recused himself as he should have. Whitaker didn't recuse himself, but Whitaker did not take the attorney for the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York off the case after he had recused himself, because even that was a step too far, but Trump tried to get him to do that. He did not, I believe, appoint Bill Barr, who has a good reputation in Washington, without having some belief that he wouldn't be making a second Sessions appointment, and he wanted somebody to take care of him. This is his Achilles heel. This is what will bring him down, because I assure you that what we've seen already has shown us this to be the most corrupt administration ever. As President Obama said, he's got, they've gotten a, a whole football team's worth of indictments and guilty pleas. There have been 34, 36 indictments or guilty pleas from people involved in his campaign and his, in his family business and in his administration. This is awful. It goes back to Warren G. Harding and maybe beyond that. And what what, what recourse does Congress the, have, though? Any? Congress can bring Mueller, can bring General uh, uh, Special Counsel Mueller before our committee, and hopefully he would uh, come. I mean, if he wanted to, I guess he could challenge uh, the subpoena, but I don't think he would. And hopefully he would testify fulsomely uh, about what he learned, because the democracy is in the balance. Uh, I want um, there I, there I are do. truly the rule of law is in the balance. I want to ask you about these unsealed warrants that we're now getting a look at from the Michael Cohen raid. We should be clear, there is much that is redacted, so we're not seeing it all. But a, a lot of it, the public can see for the first time. H have you been able to see these yet? No, and I'd like to. And I think what's interesting is what was the probable cause that gave them, the, the, the judge, the reason to issue the warrant? And what did they know back in 2017? Was it simply the affairs he'd had with Stormy Daniels and Catherine McDougal, or was there more to it? Some of it had to do with working as a foreign agent without registering, and who was he working for, and, and which countries and all, and some of it was bank fraud. And was that bank fraud all related simply to Michael Cohen and his businesses, or was it Trump's businesses? The bottom line is we know that Michael Cohen was involved in uh, 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 illegal activities, he was making tremendous amounts of money representing AT&T and others uh, with interactions with the White House. And the fact is Trump referred people to Michael Cohen, knowing that Michael Cohen would extort money and large sums from them with the idea that Trump was doing a favor to Michael Cohen. 
and Trump has would have wanted Michael Cohen to do a favor to, for him, which was to keep quiet, the old mafia law of Alberta. And then when Michael Cohen got busted, he changed his tune and started speaking at the truth because he has no choice but to speak the truth because he knows Robert Mueller and the special counsel in the Southern District of New York have when everything you're, you're in the talking, When you're talking about the referral by the president to Michael Cohen, what are you talking about? Well, I think it was, it's, I know of, of, of certain cases, I can't talk about them right now, that President Trump suggested to certain individuals that they should contact Michael Cohen for representation. That's, yeah, and that's something that you found business. in the course of your work on the Judiciary Committee? I, I don't want to go any further than what I've said, but I've, it's I've, come in the course of my, of my life. All right, all right. So um, at this point in time, the committee that you're on, the Judiciary Committee, has gotten a few thousand documents from the former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon. Uh, is there anyone who has refused to turn over documents to the committee? Mr. Nadler has, feels comfortable with what we receive. We want to receive more, and only Mr. Nadler and his team, Mr. Eisen and Mr. Burke, mm -hmm. that really know the results. He hasn't made a disclosure to the rest of the committee yet. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you about earlier this year when the House approved nearly unanimously this resolution against white nationalism and what the president has now said about this. He says he, he, he won't acknowledge that this is a rising threat. What's your reaction to that? It's, it's really un-American and unpresidential for the president not to take a leadership position to protect the American public. We've seen Jews killed at the synagogue in Pittsburgh by white nationalists. We've seen political figures put on lists with bombs sent to them by a, a, a white nationalist, a crazy in, in, in Miami who was politically driven, and, and then a Coast Guard employee who had political uh, Democrats on his agenda to kill. We've seen Charlottesville where they marched and said Jews will not replace us and marched with KKK and neo-Nazis. And then we've seen New Zealand around the world and, and while that's national, it's part of the same white national movement. This is a threat. The Southern Poverty Law Center has pointed out more actions by white nationalists and white supremacists killing people than all, any group really in this nation's history. And all the president talks about is Muslims and he talks about any group that's not politically with him, and then if a group is normally aligned with him, as white nationalists would be, because that's his base, is, is, is white people in America, he will not condemn them. He needs to start to act presidential, as the president of all the people, concerned about the rule of law, and is concerned about the standing of the United States of America in its own people's eyes, and in the eyes of the people around the world. But that's beyond Donald Trump because everything relates to Donald Trump personally. He's greedy, he is avaricious, and he cares. It's narcissistic. It's all about him, it's about his pocketbook, and it's about his family. America is second or third. Let's talk about the Electoral College. There were many Democratic voters who continue to point out Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, Donald Trump won the electoral vote. They're not happy about that. They want to change it. And last night at a CNN town hall in Mississippi, Senator and Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren said that the U.S. should get rid of the Electoral College in the presidential elections. Let's listen. Come a general election, presidential candidates don't come to places like Mississippi because we're not the battleground states. Well, my view is that every vote matters. That means get rid of the Electoral College and everybody. Do you agree? I introduced, I think it's HRS 7 in January to get rid of the Electoral College, a constitutional amendment. We're going to be sending it to Senator Warren's office and asking her to sponsor it in the Senate for us. But so how do you we, do I it? I definitely agree. When it's enshrined in, in the Constitution, is it this state, this state sort of run around the Electoral College of making sure that electoral votes go to the popular vote winner? It would certainly be difficult. You have to amend the Constitution, and that requires getting uh, a, a number of votes in Congress. That will be difficult but possible, but it means to get uh, three-quarters of the states, and that will be difficult because enough of the states get an advantage in electing the president uh, that they may not want to give that up and probably won't. A way to get around it is the compromise or the, the, the um, uh, uh, Colorado and a few states have tried to start a compact 
to yeah. say that if, if two states with a total of 270 or more electoral votes agree that these all states will come together and give their votes to the winner of the popular vote. The country is different than it was when the Constitution was drafted. And when the Constitution was drafted, a lot of it had to do with slavery. The slave states wanted equal representation in the Senate because they wanted to keep slavery. The slave states wanted to have an electoral college to where the members that they had in Congress counted towards the, the vote of president, where the slaves counted as, as, as two-thirds. In a popular vote, they would count as zero. So the slave states didn't want a popular election because their slaves wouldn't count toward voting and the slave states would have less votes. Uh, this is all uh, conceived in sin and in, in perpetrating, perpetu perpetuating slavery on the American uh, people and on the African American people directly. We need to give the people who understand from town halls like Elizabeth Warren had in Memphis on Sunday and in Jackson and I think today in Birmingham the opportunity to vote. And as Senator Warren said, this doesn't give the people in New York and Chicago and Los Angeles the right to decide who wins. It gives everybody that's not in one of the, the targeted states in the Electoral College uh, the opportunity to have their vote count. And the people in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, Republicans and conservatives live there too and vote there as well. But right now, people in Tennessee don't count because we know the state's going to go Republican. But if it's a popular vote, people will come to the Tennessee to get those votes in Memphis and other places, and it'll be a much more democratic system and fair, and the American people need to take control of their government that's being lost to, to entities Con that have really are eliminated the middle class. Congressman Steve Cohen, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it.